small, medium, large, extra large, extra extra large. Hey everyone, I started to get into xenon strobe lights and so I wanted a way to measure the voltage, current, and light output of a strobe as it flashes. I took apart a Speedatron 4803 head unit and discovered that there's a pulse transformer inside the head. So uh, there's two large wires which supply the capacitor voltage, the whole bank voltage, out to the strobe light. And then when the unit wants to cause a flash to happen, it sends a pulse out to the transformer, which kicks up probably a few thousand volts to initiate the strobe. The easiest measurement is just to measure the voltage across the strobe light as it fires, but I already ran into a problem. The Speedatron is wired so that the neutral of the main supply is actually connected to the middle of the capacitor bank, and so there's plus 450 and minus 450 around the neutral and uh, the case is also grounded. I tried lifting the ground just by disconnecting it and uh, still had a, a fault when I connected the, the a negative side of the capacitor bank, the negative 450 to my scopes ground. I proceeded to find a woefully inadequate isolation transformer on my shelf and connected it up between the speedotron and the line with just some alligator clips. I knew that this was not going to be sufficient uh, to run the unit for any length of time, but the way the Speedatron works, it charges up and draws a lot of power for a relatively short amount of time, and then draws very low power while it's idling. So I thought if I was careful enough and didn't fire it too often, I'd be okay. Later on, the transformer actually started to smoke a little bit, so it was definitely getting hot, but um, did the job. With the isolation transformer in place, I was able to connect my scopes ground to the negative side of the capacitor bank. So essentially the entire Speedatron unit is now pushed above ground, so it would be a very bad idea to touch the case while it's in this condition. I have a wooden workbench and was well aware not to touch the uh, metal case while this was all going on. I used a high voltage probe to detect the voltage across the strobe light and fired it with just a simple trigger on the oscilloscope and got this chart here. I was very surprised at how slow the voltage changes, so you know, you can see the charge cycle starting kind of near the end there, and it actually takes over 50 milliseconds to get down to a steady state voltage. Um, the 75 millivolts on the left column is actually the steady state voltage where that small cursor is. So it levels off at about 75 volts, and the capacitor bank <clears throat> is charged up to about 1,000 volts uh, to start before the flash is initiated. Next, I wanted to measure the current in addition to voltage, so one way to do this is with a, a shunt. So I have a milliohm meter and some 14 gauge solid wire, and I slid the alligator clips around on the wire until I had a section that was about one milliohm in resistance. The idea being that for every amp that flows through this section of wire, there will be a one millivolt drop. So I soldered the wire in between the negative of the flash lamp and the negative supply in the speedatron, and then uh, slid the alligator clips around again and marked it with a sharpie so that I knew where the, the, section, the appropriate section of wire was. As you can see, the voltage and current are fairly linearly related during the flash. I also produced another graph showing the power. Trace C is, the, is 1 times 2, which is voltage times current and D is the integral of C, so D is actually the uh, total power that the unit has put out over the course of the flash. And as you can see, it levels off, and the cursor shows that there's about 5.17 uh, units there, and the units are, in fact, uh, kilojoules. So this, this agrees with reality pretty well. It's a 4800 uh, watt-second unit, which is a joule, and the measurement is coming in pretty close, 5.17 kilojoules. Here's a close-up of the current uh, drawn by the strobe during a flash. As you can see, there's a peak, and the peak is around 3,000 amps, and then the graph levels off right around 1,000 amps and continues on sloping very uh, slowly downward for, for quite a long time. The x-axis in this case is 50 microseconds per division. Finally, I wanted to see how much light was actually coming out of the strobe, so I took an LED and put a 100 ohm resistor across the leads and then connected that directly to the scope. 
the idea is that when light hits the PN uh, junction in there, it functions kind of like a tiny solar cell, and the 100 ohm resistor keeps the uh, junction from saturating. So initially I tried this without any resistor on there, and it, <laughs> the amount of light going into that LED saturates it so fully that the, the voltage goes up to, you know, 1.6 or 7 volts or whatever the, the uh, junction is set up for and it basically just hangs there for a long time because the junction is so incredibly saturated. So with a stiff 100 ohm resistor across it, uh, the junction won't saturate and we'll get a very uh, very accurate quick, quick time measurement of the light going into the junction. So as you can see, the, the light is not quite proportional to the current. In this graph, uh, B is the current and A is the light output from the LED. And you can see that the current is decaying, you know, kind of linearly over this scale, but the light is actually decaying much more quickly. The time here is 2 milliseconds per division. So as you can see, there's about 5 divisions, or about 10 milliseconds, for the, um, the, you know, the approximate flash duration. I'm actually surprised at how long the tail is on this thing. I was expecting the flash to be very, very quick quick down to zero and then a lot of, you know, zero, but this actually does taper down quite a bit. So it's hard to say how long the flash duration actually is because there's so much tapering. Okay, well I plan to continue these experiments with uh, xenon flash tubes. Hopefully we'll get to do some uh, ruby laser stuff and uh, high power aerial photography at night, perhaps, something. Uh, setting things on fire, you never know. Okay, see you next time. Bye.